At the heart of every refinery is power, the electricity needed to drive this complex facility. The old Port Harcourt refinery, which is currently under rehabilitation, will require 15 substations for startup. So far, 64 kilometers of new electrical cables have been laid to achieve this. 65% of those cables were sourced locally. Substation 1, which is the refinery's primary substation and powerhouse, will supply electricity to substations in the old and new refineries. It is designed to receive power from gas turbine generators. Right now we are at the testing phase and um, we hope to finish the testing phase in a week so that once we finish the testing phase and we're very sure we can commission here, I'm very sure by the next time you come in less than two weeks time, all the lights will be on and here will be up and energized. We call it energizing the substation. Once we energize here, all the other substations, sub B, sub D, the other substations in area five will also be likewise energized. And then that will give uh, power to all the other disciplines, all the other engineering disciplines that require like your pumps, your motors, your coolers, your columns, everything because I like to say electrical is the heart of the refinery. That was two weeks ago. True to his words, the substation has been completed and energized. It is a complete rehabilitation of all substations at the refinery and not a revamp or upgrade. Here lies old equipment that has served the substation for decades. Currently at the pre-commissioned stage, a total of 100 electrical staff worked on the installation of the switchgear panels. The good thing it's been installed in Nigeria, major, majorly by Nigerians, who have been under the good supervision of uh, both the NETCO and the PHROC team to make sure that they efficiently and uh, we, we minimize the errors. It's designed in such a way that the new and the old refinery, we, we call it old, although everything there has been replaced and it should change the name from old to new now, but it's designed in such a way it supplies refinery one and refinery two power. So from here, you can send power to refinery one. Even if there's an issue there, this place stays up. In refinery two, even if there's an issue there, this place stays up. So here, no matter what has to be up, it never comes down. It was a big contention even during design phase that took us close to three months to know and figure out we with the PHRC team, the PMC team and uh, the contractor had to come together and put our heads together. The substation which contains high voltage panels, low voltage panels and motor control center panels receives 11,000 volts of electricity. From here, it is stepped down for distribution to other substations. We can see we have energized. As I said, we'll be energizing in the few weeks. We have energized this particular switch gear, and these indicate the protection relays. You can see the red, yellow, blue, and the, we are doing some final checks because safety is key to make sure that everything is working. This is the mid high voltage switch gear with the vacuum circuit breakers. It's a Snyder product. The vendor has come, he has already programmed the HMI, which you saw was on in the other one. Commissioning is ready for sub one. Sub one is commissioned, and we are just doing the final check so that we can send out power to the other substations. Then immediately from sub one, it is transmitted to the substation B, which powers all area five substations. And also from here, we power the PPU, we power the life camp, we power the wastewater, and we power the new refinery. So it all indeed starts here. This is the primary substation for the Portacot refinery, both old and new. And from here, power goes everywhere else. Okay, so during this rehabilitation project, all the equipment in this substation have been taken out. The, the transformers, the switch gears, the bus bars, all of them, and even the EPM, EPMS, that's the Electronic Power Management System, has also been introduced. Everything here is brand new, latest technology and up to date. Though brand new, a few modifications were made to improve its protection system. This was done to prevent a recurring problem in the past where a fault downstream could affect the substation. 
cable termination is ongoing for other substations. Currently energized by generators, it will be powered by gas turbine generators in mid-December. The control room, which houses the integrated control and safety system, the brain of the refinery, comprising the distributed control system, the emergency shutdown system, and the fire and gas system, have also recorded remarkable progress in the past two weeks. It is in this room that the equipment which controls plant operations and monitors process conditions such as flow, temperature and pressure can be found. The site acceptance tests for the Yokogawa Centum VP control systems, which involves the verification of the bill of materials, wiring corrections, layout drawings, general and internal arrangements of cabinets and validating the functionality of the system have all been concluded. Loop checking with field instrumentation is about to commence. So in here is the control room. The cables from the rack room comes into here. We have the operator's workstation and then we have the engineering workstation. The operator workstation is five, the engineering workstation is four. The engineering workstation, one of them is for the distributed control system. The, other, the second one is for the ESD, that's the emergency shutdown fire and gas system. The third one is for plant resource management and the fourth one is PIMS, that is plant information management system. So we expect to have four engineers and five operators. The operators are generally going to monitor plant operation, ensure that there is process safety and there is alarm management here. If there is an alarm, there can be an emergency shutdown or to ensure that the plant works within the process, the set process conditions. NNPC Limited continues in its effort towards ensuring energy sufficiency as the rehabilitation of the old Port Harcourt refinery gathers momentum.